Greetings, this is a video on how to enhance your document, i.e. enhance your worksheet, by adding all sorts of features such as non-executable math, putting arrows over your vectors, and also having cool subscripts. Let's get started. As been pointed out before, there are execution groups and there are text groups. Right now we are in an execution group, so if I write the word restart, we restart, we make a new execution group. To create a new text group, we click the T up here, and now this is some text. You may have noticed that when I put the cursor in the execution group, it defaults by putting in the word math. This tells us what sort of information is going to be within each group. Here is the information within the text group. Notice it's default by text. Okay. We can actually create text within an execution group. Let's create another execution group. And so if I hit Control shift k or Command shift k for a Mac, then you're now in the text input. This is the input inside a Ex an execution group. The big key, key here is you see these three letters, the difference between text, non-executable math, and math. In fact, within text, you can actually add a non-executable math. So let's add some math here. If I click on non-executable math, I can now to put some math in, such as uh, f of x is equal to the sine of x times and then we could put an integral sign in, uh, exp escape to the minus x tab x. This is now an non-executable graph, so that if I triple exclamation point, nothing happens when it, it gets executed. Okay. On the other hand, the other way one can change around is by using the F5 command. If I want to write go back to, if I want to go back to text, I can click F5, and now I'm in the math group, and then I have it F5 again, again, now I'm back to the text group. So now I'm back and I can say, this is text. Another useful uh, attribute of Maple is that you can add subscripts to your variables. This makes your math far more readable, something that, again, you can hand off to someone else who doesn't use Maple, and they can read what you are writing. For example, let's say we want to create epsilon sub zero. Epsilon, okay, I hit the escape, it turns over to, and if I hit underscore, then another underscore, suddenly the character uh, I should say the cursor goes to the subscript, I can put a zero in. I could put other stuff in, but once I reach the end, I hit the right arrow button and I'm out of it. Times alpha escape underscore underscore three. And that's what appears. What actually is creating is if I say L print of epsilon escape underscore underscore zero is it's actually storing maybe uh, this as epsilon with the underscores there as well okay this becomes particularly useful if you want to do something like oh energy is defined as k sub translational plus k sub rotational plus u there's one warning about this, is if you put an extra space at the end of your subscript, it will be difficult to be able to tell. For example, what if we say L print epsilon sub sub zero, and I put an extra space. Now when I close the thing, you will notice that there is an extra space, and it's difficult to show that epsilon sub zero zero space go to the right equals and let's say at is this epsilon sub zero no space and the answer is false so those are two characters so be warned don't put in extra space at the end of your subscript another nice feature about maple is that you can put arrows over your vectors this was shown in the vectors section, but I'll do an example. So let's say we want F sub arrow. So F, and then it's either 
command shift on Mac or control shift and the double quote button and that will put the cursor above the F. Then if you put a dash then a greater than sign it will turn it to an arrow. To get out of there you just put the uh, hit the right arrow uh, button and now you're, you've created the F. If we want to even have subscripts with an F that would be fine too. F command shift double quote at the same time, put the cursor above, dash greater than, go to the right, and then underscore, underscore, um, net, which we won't use in net. Notice again, I use the right arrow to get out of the subscript, and now we've created the net force. All font can be changed at any time by using the information up here in the menu bar. So I can say, um, let's say let's put something with text with a very large font say 16 let's make it bolded attention then if I had the next line and I return it to 12 with italics this is some text okay. that's very useful you can also change the color I'll select the word sum I will then select the word T and I will make it red and now the text is red. You can also put points in. Let's get rid of this. We will turn off the bold. Turn off the, and now if I select, oops, if I select the bold and now I can st item one, item two, item three. And if I want to stop these uh, itemized entities, I just click the button again and now I'm back to the key points. By the way you also can spell if you under look tools spell check or F7 it will go through and redo uh, sp the spell checking. Unfortunately it doesn't do grammar checking which is what I really need. In addition to being able to modify the text you can also add images for example I snipped a copy of the screen when I hit Command V or Control V on the, I can insert it and therefore I can change the size. Be careful um, if you click on any edge and change the size, it will not keep the ratio the same. Um, notice I made a mistake here. I will Control Z or Command Z to undo it. But if I hold the Shift button down, while I'm moving things, it keeps the ratio the same. It is also possible to insert JPEGs from files and from other sources. Frequently, when you want to print, you need to insert a page break. So if you select Insert Page Break or Control Enter, then when it prints, it will you will see a new page starting here. If you like to add headers and footers to your document, that is under Insert Header Footer. And now you can see that you can add whatever you want. I have a tendency to add a custom header where the file name is on the left. There's nothing in the center and there's nothing on the right. And the footer consists of nothing on the left, nothing in the center. But on the right, I write page number of number of pages. And when I hit preview, you will see the header with the file on the left uh, at the top and the page information at the bottom. You can also print page. One thing that's new about Maple is the ability to see it from a page document format that means you have to click on this page, the print layout i actually don't like the print layout but one thing it does show you for example is it's going to put insert a page break there um, if you print and it's important to you to make sure it lines up what you might do is note that and then create your own page break by inserting one there and that's what you can do there as always, you can generate a PDF. For example, in Windows, you set print to a PDF. Select Microsoft Print to PDF. The other option in Windows, which isn't as good, 
is to use the file execute export as. Well, that's what I have for today. If you'd like to see something else that I need to show you how to do, put a comment below.